All right, guys and gals. So I decided I'm gonna do a new project. And there's many videos out there on how you uh, can make your own forge. Um, I actually watched a video on a guy doing a forge out of a propane tank. Um, it's pretty formative, however, I'm gonna do one as well on how I decided to make mine. So, here's some tools you're gonna need. You're gonna definitely make sure that you have it completely purged. Um, even when it's empty, there's still gonna be propane tank or propane inside of the tank. When you go to drilling in that, or you go to cutting it, um, you're gonna have a nice, I don't know how big the explosion would be, but it wouldn't be very pleasurable, I can promise you that. Um, so I've actually already purged mine. I'm gonna show you how I purged it. And then you're gonna take this, this nozzle here off. Um, if you look down inside of where the fitting is here, where you would hook up your um, you know, fitting for your barbecue or whatever cooker you got, there's a little small circle in there. You got this O-ring here, and you have this circle inside the O-ring. Purge it, you're just gonna push in on it. You're gonna open this up all the way, and then you're gonna, you're gonna push that ring in all the way, and that's how you purge it. Um, and then once you get it all purged, you'll be able to um, safely remove this. And how I removed mine is all I did was I used a pretty big uh, adjustable crescent wrench. Um, I started on this side, got it to where it was about here. Um, I used ball peen hammer and just kept tapping it, tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. And then, um, yeah, uh, kept, kept loosening it off and finally came out. I don't know if you've ever seen what one looks like, but this is what the innards of it looks like. As soon as you take it off, it's still gonna smell like propane. Um, and that's because there's still gonna be a little bit of propane in there. So I don't know if this is necessary or not, but what I decided to do, which this is about half full of water, was I know if I go ahead and fill this thing up completely with water, that there will be no propane left inside of there. So that's all I'm gonna do. That's the purging portion. That's gonna be the first part of the video. The next part is gonna be me cutting this up, or cutting the top part off for a lid, and then also cutting a aluminum can size, maybe a little bit bigger width hole at the top where I'm putting the water in right now. That's for me to slip my cans in there while I'm, uh, while I'm hot without having to take the lid off. Um, stay tuned, appreciate the watch, thanks. All right, so I got a couple of the uh, drilled four holes with my drill bit. Uh, the drill bit cut through it like butter. I expected it to be a little more uh, challenging than it was, but it was fairly simple. I made these holes in all probably about um, one minute. Um, next, I got a hole big enough to get my, my blade in there for the Sawzall, my metal cutting blade. And I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to follow this line all the way around without it being too ugly. But I'll be able to file it down if it gets you know out of whack. But uh, yeah, that's what we're at so far. All right, so I got my hole in there. Um, the Sawzall really didn't uh, work out as good as I wanted it to, only because you kind of see here where I started my pilot holes and I started cutting with the, uh, the Sawzall. It started working, but then it wanted to keep going straight. I couldn't get in the turn. So just by the looks, you guys can probably tell what I did. Drilled a bunch of pilot holes, um, then I basically took this pretty decent sized flathead and broke the bridge in between this one all the way around and then it fell right in. Uh, that took me probably about five minutes. Um, so one alternative alternative you have if uh, Sawzall fails you, but I broke a blade trying to do it. There's, there it is down there. Um, but yeah, improvise, right? So this isn't gonna be one of those $400 kilns. It's just gonna be something that I made back home that's gonna serve one purpose of melting cans. But I made my hole big enough to drop a can right in. So why it's you know, hot, just it'll drop it in without lifting the lid off. So the next step is I'm gonna cut this thing in half and um, I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. 
Well, I got it cut in half. It wasn't too hard. Um, only regret I have is wearing a flip flops while I was doing it. Um, as the little shards came off as I was cutting it, uh, they were friggin' hot. Uh, as you can see, lid. There's gonna. That's it. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is figure out. Um, I'll probably do the kiln part first. Um, but I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the inside. I think I'm gonna do it just like everybody else does. I'm gonna drill a hole in the side, probably somewhere here at an angle. Um, find a pipe that I'm gonna run through so when I uh, do all the cement mix, um, it won't, you know, I don't have to chisel out any concrete. It'll just be a solid hole ready for the pipe to be ran through it and that'll be it. Uh, but what I went ahead and got Refract refractory cement right here withstands up to 2200 degrees. Um, it was kind of expensive, it's about 20 bucks for um, I think this is 12 and a half pounds or whatever it is. But that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix half and half. What I'll end up doing is I'm gonna put some rocks there at the bottom, kind of level it out, put some of the quick setting cement in there with the sand mixture. And I'll put a layer of this um, refractor cement. And then I'm going to use one of these tubs. Probably that tub. It doesn't seem like the tub is too angled at all. And then just build up around it and until I get to the top. And then I figure I'm going to do the that to hold in the cement. I've seen some guys, they welded some bars in. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just probably put a bolt through here every so often that goes all around, put a, run a wire, and then that'll be it for me for the lid, for the top, but that's where we're at so far. So here's where we're at. Um, what I've gone ahead and done is drilled me a hole, kind of an oval hole that way. When I put the pipe in, I can have it straight in, but I can have it at some sort of an angle, as you can see there. So I want a cyclone of air inside the actual, uh, in the furnace itself. So it's going to sit just like that, the attachment here. I'm going to have to do some research and figure out um, how they do the propane attachments. The first couple burns are going to be um, charcoal burns, though. Um, just so I can kind of get used to how the whole thing goes and works and um, Over here is a lid so I don't have a, um, a Welding machine at all nor do I know how to weld but I do know it's important for the lid portion that you have some sort of uh, Something like this going on to keep the cement from falling on a lid so What I do is I got some um, rebar tie rods here. I'm gonna attach them here. That way, just kind of go. It's just wire that basically goes through each one of these. Probably two on each. Um, and then what I'll end up doing is I'll tape the hole in the bottom. I'll start pouring my um, cement, and my fondry, and all that stuff. So the idea here is to be wherever the heat is going to be. I'm gonna have 100% of the fondry cement there in that bucket. So basically on the insides and the full lid portion we're going to be uh, the cement fondry there. And then um, I'm going to mix the sand the quick creep to create the bottom. Um, that way, because the, the, the refractor cement was about 20 bucks for just that tub. And that is going to be... <laughs> gonna be sitting in here like this and as it kind of you know, sets I'm gonna be pulling this out yeah that's where we're at right now all right so I got the first portion of the pouring uh, the lid looks like it's uh it's gonna be done the 
one with the bigger bucket here because my plan is because I didn't have much of that refractory cement over there. So I'm gonna do this bucket and then I'm gonna go with a smaller bucket that fits inside this one for obviously where the burn goes. Um, and I'm gonna fill the refractory cement up around the, the smaller bucket. So a good, you know, that cement's rated up to like 2200 degrees. Um, that way, at least the inside of the kiln will have a good cement. Um, I'm hoping that's gonna work. Well, trial and error, it's the first time I've ever done it. Um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Hopefully, uh, I drilled some holes in the bottom of this bucket to help move some of the air that's underneath the bucket with some water that's coming up, as you can see there. But, yeah, that's where we're at, and I hope that this is going to work pretty good. Got this makeshift little set up here for the side holding that up. Um, I'm still going to have to you know, chisel some, some cement in there to get it to go all the way through. Not an entirely big deal, but yeah. I'm out here in a few hours, hope this is set up hard enough to pull off this stuff. Alright, so here we go. It's fired up for the first time. It's been running for quite a bit. You can see, got a nice little bit of aluminum in there. Aluminum in there all melted up. Um, it's been a couple days since I finished it. Um, if you guys want, I'll do a quick video of how I made this torch here. But it works super easy. So far, the whole setup um, was maybe 60 bucks tops. That's including the expensive, uh, what is it called? Uh, this stuff right here. This was a good majority of the cost right there, the frackery cement. But, she's rolling. And we're gonna do a pour here in a second. I'll show you guys how I made this, made this um, torch here. Essentially all it is is um, a 16 inch, one inch uh, iron pipe to a one to inch and a quarter bell coupler. Um, and that is a four inch, uh, just another four inch, or four inches in length by one and one quarter width. Um, to a control valve there as you can see. I don't know if you can see on the inside, but I have a elbow. Basically I drilled into it with an elbow. And that's where the, the gas is fed through. And then the line to the regular. Um, I'm not gonna do a video of me pouring it out. I'll do one with me already have it or with me already poured the aluminum out. I just don't want to hold it phone while I'm pouring at the same time. It's pretty dangerous, but there we go. Alright, so here's our first pour. You gotta make sure that you don't touch it, obviously, because it's insanely hot. But there you go. Pretty terrible pour, but my first one. And that's how it's done.